Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve longest repeating character replacement. So we're given a string s and another integer k. You can choose any character of the string and change it to any other uppercase English character. And you can perform this operation at most k times. We need to return the length of the longest substring containing the same letter that you can get after performing the above operations. A lot to unpack, but really not too bad. So if we had the string s of ab ab and k equals two, that means we are allowed to change two characters to be whatever we want. So in that case, we could just change this A to be B and this A to also be B, and therefore the full string would be all Bs. We used our two allowed conversions, so that's totally valid. So the output is four, because since we're able to do that, we actually end up getting the length of the longest substring containing the same character. So the same character would be B, and therefore we'd have a substring, it's just that the substring string is the whole string, we'd have a substring of four Bs in a row, and that's the longest we could possibly get because we used the whole string, and so we would output that length, which is four. Now this example, k equals one, well, you'd want to pick on the spots to convert that are going to have the most value. And so here you can see that if this was actually a B, then we'd have all of these are Bs in a row. So we're allowed one conversion. If you were to change this to B, that's totally allowed. We'd have one, two, three, four Bs in a row. That would be the max that we could get. And therefore we'd return that, which is four. There's actually another way to get four as well. So if we change this B to be an A, and that again makes four, but either way we return the same thing. And just so we're perfectly clear, S is consisting only of uppercase English letters. So you're given uppercase English letters, and when you do the conversions, you'd also convert those to uppercase letters. Now we're going to do this through a sliding window problem, and if you haven't solved the problem longest substring without repeating characters, that's the problem where I really fundamentally explain the sliding window algorithm as best as possible. So check the description and that one's gonna be there. I would watch that first, but I'm still gonna explain the full algorithm. I would just watch that first anyway. Okay, so to start a sliding window algorithm, we would have L and R both initialized at the beginning here. So currently our window is just this substring of A. Now is this value Valid. By valid, we mean, are you actually allowed to consider this as your longest output? But if we change at most two things, is our entire window the same character? Well, of course it is. We just have one character and it's an A. So we're going to mark down here that the longest we've seen so far is equal to one. How do we actually get one from the calculation? We can always get the length of our current window by R minus L plus one, because here these are both gonna be zeros. So that just makes zero. And then we would get one here. So the length of our window is one. Pretend that we initialize this at zero. We found a better one, which is one. Now, as long as our window is valid, we want to try and increase the window. And that means move R to the right. Okay, so now we have two characters in the window. Is this substring or window valid? Well, it is valid because they're all the same character. We don't actually have to convert anything, but we could if we wanted to. They're already the same character. And therefore, we can say, okay, we found a new line longest, we could get that the window length is R minus L plus one, but we can just say that the longest is two so far. Okay, the window is valid, and so we move R over. Now we actually have another character in the window. We have a B. So we have to basically use up one of these Ks that we have here, okay? We have to convert one so that it is valid. Now that we've done that, we can basically treat this as an A, and again, our window is valid. We just had to convert a B to an A, that's fine. So we can get our new longest is actually equal to the current window length, which is three. Now we can actually see that as we move this over, we're actually going to keep this valid. And so that's going to go up to a four. If we move this over again, still valid. And so this is going to go up to a five. And then when we get to the end here, it is still valid. We just need to convert the C to an A and we're able to do that because we still had one K remaining over here. So we can now treat this as an A that is actually valid. And so the longest so far is now six. Now for this example, we'd actually get to the end of the string and that's when you could return your longest here. But now let's backtrack for a second. And instead of adding that C here, so when we go to add that C, we try to do that and we try to add it in. Actually, okay, let's pretend that at the very beginning of this, K was actually equal to one. Well, all of this stuff would have been fine, so that's okay. But now at this point, this window is actually invalid. The current window we're looking at here, this is not valid because we had to convert 
this B to an A, but then over here, we still have to convert this to an A, but we're not able to because we've actually already used up the K that we had on the B. So this window is completely invalid. So since this window is invalid, we need to try and make it valid. That means that we need to move L over. So did this help? Is this window valid? Well, no, we just got rid of an A. That's not really gonna help our problem to get the K back here. We need to get that K back. So we try to make it valid again. We move L over. Is this substring valid? All that we lost here is really just another A. That's still not gonna help. So let's try this one more time. We'll move the L over. And so we can say, is this valid? Well, yes, we don't have to use our K over here anymore. So we really get our K back. Now with C over here, we're actually able to convert this to an A. So this substring is valid. And then we could keep moving R over if there was more characters too. Okay, so we've explained all of the logic here, except for the key step of actually saying concretely how we're knowing that a window is invalid. So let's look at this, for example, and say that we actually had zero Ks. Well, how do we know that this window is invalid. We can't say in particular to remember that we're using A's here because maybe we'd hit a point where we are looking at something like this, where if we were looking over here, we'd want to know that we actually want to switch the A to be a B. And then maybe we are looking at something where you had C, C, A, B, and therefore you'd want to utilize the C's. What we're really doing here is we're saying the max character that we've seen throughout that window. So in our current window, whatever character is the maximum, that's the one that we're going to try to convert the other ones to. So to keep track for our window, the frequencies that we have of the characters, this could be the amount of A's that we had. This is B's, C's, D's, and so on. So this is just initializing, say for the very beginning here, we'd have at the beginning, we have nothing. And then when we see this A, we'd see, okay, well, this is our current window. And I will add in the fact that we have an A. And then if we moved our over, we'd actually end up adding another A. So again, we say, okay, we actually have two A's now. And then when we moved R over again, we would see that we had a B. And so we would add one over here. So we have a B. And here is actually where we discover that this window is invalid. If our K is zero here, this substring is not valid. And we can use this to figure that out. Well, we could say the max of this. So we'll call this just array A for now. So if we get that the max of A, so the maximum of our array is saying, okay, well, we know that we're using two of something. We don't really care which letter it is. It just means of all the characters that we have here, the highest frequency we have is two. We know that our current window length, I'll call it W, is equal to R minus L plus 1. So that's how many characters in total are in our window. If we have the condition W minus the max of A, if that is greater than K, let's think about what that means. So we have the number of characters total minus the number we've already accounted for. So this difference here, that is basically the amount of characters that we must change. So here for our window length of three, well, that's our three here. If we take away the max of the frequency array, so that's saying three minus two, well, that's saying we have to fix one thing. And that's exactly right. We have to convert that B. But if that is greater than K, K is the amount of things we're allowed to change, this condition being true right here is exactly what it means for our window to be invalid. It means that the amount of stuff that we have to change is actually bigger than the stuff we're allowed to change. So this is precisely what says this is an invalid window. Okay, so with that being said, we can jump right into the code. Okay, so let's initialize that the longest length we've seen so far is equal to zero. And also L is going to be equal to zero as well. Now we'll get our frequency array, which I'll call counts. That is equal to an array of 26 zeros. So the first one is going to be the count of A, second will be B, up until the 25th index will be Z. Okay, so we'll do our sliding window. So we say for R in the range of the length of the string. So we'll send him through and we'll immediately update the counts array to include the fact that R moved over. So that means that if we just update the correct index, that's going to be the ORD of S at R, I'll explain this in a moment, that counts at the ORD of S at R minus 65, that is going to go up by one. So in this line, this is basically saying that whatever character we saw in the string here at R, so that's S at R, well, if you get the ORD of that character, well, that in Python is just going to convert it to its ASCII value. And so if these are upper 
uppercase English letters, well, a capital A is going to be converted to 65. So imagine S at R is capital A, well, then that's going to change this to 65. If we do 65 minus 65, that is a way of marking that the A index is going to be at zero. And then B, well, B would actually be, that's gonna be 66. And so this whole thing will be one. So we add the frequency of the character plus one, and then we can say, hey, well, this window might be invalid now. We need to check this. So this is going to be while the window is invalid. We wrote this exactly. So while R minus L plus one, that is the length of our current window, while that length minus the max of the counts, while that is bigger than K, it means there's more characters that we have to convert than we're able to. And so we need to try and make our window valid. So we are going to set the counts at the ord of S at L minus 65. That is going to go down by one. Okay, so whatever character L was on, we're going to lose that character. And so we decrease its frequency. And then we actually move that variable over by L plus equals one. Okay, so after we escape this while loop, that means that our window is valid. So we can see if we found a longer length. So we'll set longest equal to the maximum of itself and the current window length, which is R minus L plus one. So given that this window length is valid, if it's bigger than the current longest, then longest is going to be set to that. Otherwise, if it wasn't any bigger, then we'll just keep it as it was before. After we get out of all of these loops, we can just return the longest and that's our answer. If we were to run that, that would work just fine. Okay, so let's talk about the complexity of this. So the time complexity, believe it or not, this is fully a big O of N. Why is that? Well, let's go through it. This is constant, this is constant, this is 26, but that's still constant. We send R through the length of the string, that if you count the length of the string as N, well then that's definitely at least an O of N. This is just indexing and increasing, that is constant. This while loop, well, this piece is constant, that's a computation. We get the max of counts, well counts is 26, letters long. So this has a 26 component, so it's rather slow because we keep getting a max of 26 things. It's not super fast, but it doesn't change the complexity, so that is constant. Now we just need to think, how many times is this while loop actually going to execute? Well, what is it doing? Every single time it executes, we move L over, and L is never moving backwards. So what that means is that, hey, this thing's not going to run more than N times total. We mean throughout the course that this entire function is run, this is only going to run at most N times. Because as long as we keep moving L forward here, we're always moving R forward, they're never turning around, therefore this thing Thing can run a total number of times across all of the iterations here, it's only going to run at most n times. Okay, so this time complexity is, I would say, a slow O of n, but it's still an O of n. And there is kind of a way to get a faster O of n, but uh, it's kind of confusing, so we're not going to bother covering that. And again, it doesn't change the complexity anyway. So the space complexity of this, what are we storing? Well, we are storing an array of 26 things, but again, those are just 26 things, and what we're storing in them is just numbers. And so the space complexity, the space complexity of that is really just a constant solution. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.